Hi, I'm Simon Rushton and this is Taxi Chronicles podcast. On this podcast, we spontaneously interview unsuspecting passengers with their permission, allowing them to share their intimate life stories and concerns. As our slogan states, real riders, real stories. Some riders prefer to be anonymous, while others ask me to tell their story later on. Either way, they are all genuine 5 to 10 minutes stories. So sit back and enjoy this episode. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode of the Taxi Chronicles. We have a rider all the way from down under. He's come to live in London. He's an entrepreneur and he's got his successful business. <laughs> I, didn't ask, I didn't even ask you your name. I know, wow, okay. But I like the intro, I like the intro. Uh, my name is James. James. I'm originally from Melbourne, but I'm, despite the accent, I've been in London for uh, nearly 20 years. And, and you've been loving it? Loving it. Love Lo- London. London's the best. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Do you go back to Melbourne uh, uh, often? Yeah, try it well. Obviously, pre-COVID, try and go uh, every 18 months or so. Um, but okay. quite lucky that, you know, Aussies like to travel, so my family gets here a lot. And uh, yeah, so we either they come here or I go there, depending on the year. Okay, that's good. So, since you've come here, what, what have you been doing before your business, before your... Uh, well, I guess um, I, I've always worked in, uh, in graphic design. Um, so when I first got here, I did what most Australians do, which was work in restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> I think and, that's everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, wash dishes, everybody. serve drinks, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I worked. Um, I worked for a, a um, advertising agency and a branding agency for many, many years. Um, and you know, it came came to it that uh, uh, I then managed to get an opportunity working overseas in Singapore for a couple of years. Um, and when I came back to London, because I miss London, I um, I really struggled to find the kind of ideal role. So I thought I'll just make it. For myself mm-hmm. and um, so set up with a business partner and we we set up a, a design agency called we do co um, three years ago we is, do you want to spell that out yeah so people can find you <laughs> so it's we do collaboration limited um, so it's we do co um, and the whole idea of our agency is that we um, we just want to work with all sorts of people and we want to work closely with them so we're all about uh, working with big businesses, startups, uh, entrepreneurs, all sorts in terms of branding and communications and digital marketing and you know app design and all of those cool things. Okay, so you you, you um, actually do quite a wide aspect of um, brand. Yeah, market. it's marketing as well as branding. Or? Yeah, yeah, it's mostly branding, but obviously that touches upon marketing. We're not, we don't, we don't do content marketing. Like we don't create podcasts or uh, videos for social media and things like that. But we will often touch upon that from a brand point of view. Um, so yeah, we're 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 a small agency, but we're generalists, I guess. And then we have um, various specialists that we call upon depending on the need. So whether that's people who are writers or film editors or uh, animators, um, etc. Okay. So any you say agency that when you, when the word agency springs to mind, it's, it reminds me obviously like recruitment. Yeah. But you're not. No, I guess I say agency in terms of creative agency. Um, so think of um, you know think of like a cool office in in Shoreditch with lots of uh, beards and cool people and tattoos and that's what I think of when I think of a creative agency I'm a bit old for the tattoos and the beards and so on now but uh, that's uh, generally the vibe yeah Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Random dog going past. Yeah, he's, he's got dogs in his... Um, in the front, in the back, in yeah, the side. On his bicycle, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, what what motivates you? Uh, what, generally or in work or both? Both. Um, I don't know, I just re- I, I, I really like... Um, I, lo- I love people. I love um, engaging with them and you know I'm, I'm quite a social person um, so I really like to um, you know anything that involves socializing with people working with people you know meeting people and just new experiences I know that sounds really cliched and 
uh, trite, but that's um, that's pretty true. So that motivates me. That's why I love London because there's always something new to experience. Mm -hmm. You always meet someone different, and um, you know I think that's that's exciting. So that that gets me out of bed. As an entrepreneur that you are, what has been the biggest hurdle? Um, I think the biggest hurdle. There's a couple of things. I think the biggest hurdle has been having confidence in your in your value. Um, and you know, understanding that what you do has a worth, and and being confident enough to be able to you know, actually you know charge people for for, for those skills and services. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other th I think then the other thing is knowing how and when to grow. So we're a small business, and you know, do we do we take on more staff? Do we have contractors? Do we do we get a bigger office? You know, so I think it's. Um, that's the thing that keeps us awake at night like we want to grow but you know it's growing in the right way without um, causing too much trouble mm -hmm. so yeah those are the things that keep me awake okay so as um, as a as a boss yeah. would you co-boss I guess yeah co-boss yeah, yeah there's two of them do, do you feel that you are going to have more people, more of your staff working from home from now on? Yeah, I mean, we're lucky we're, we're, we're a completely digital business. So, uh, you know, just before COVID, the lockdown happened, we were able to just take our laptops home. Um, we're incredibly lucky that we could just carry on working. Um, so, uh, yes, it's 100% people can work from home. I think there are still, it's quite hard, it's quite hard to, you know, do creative thinking when you're in different spaces and you're not able to share ideas and mm -hmm. so, you know, sometimes we spend five or six hours just on, on a single Teams call, uh, just chatting through things and, 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 you know, trying to come up with the, um, the, the strategies and concepts and create creative ideas that we need to, but yeah, we're lucky, we can, we can do it all digitally and all remotely. As a podcaster, I am... Um and I'm on this social group which is full of podcasters. We all came up together, all started our podcasters at the same time. Yeah. It was on this course called London Real. And the reason why I mention this is because when we we got this live stream we do now on Stream the Yard, but it's called we call ourselves Podcasters Unleashed. Yeah, like and it. Yeah, we on oh, thanks. Every Monday at seven eight seven PM GMT time we do a a live stream. Yep. And well, I'm telling you this because we have to do a lot of. We're all from different places in the world. Yep. And uh, we go by British time to make it easy, you know. But we have to like decide, agree on the logo colours and all those kind of things, and we do that all via Zoom. Yeah. Through our Zoom call, but it works really smoothly for us. Yeah, good, good. Um, and I've never really saw it as an issue or what there may be as issues until you've just pointed out what you've yeah you said so it's kind of strange because it, this comes second nature to us now um, yeah i mean i think there's certain aspects of 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 that that can be really really super effective and, and simple on on things like zoom or teams but i think a lot of a lot of what design is or a lot of what we do is is trying to solve a business problem or a communications problem and you know it's it's this is again going to sound really cliched but it's a bit of a journey and it's it's not as simple as you just plug in an answer and you know choose a color or a font or you know so you need to work through um like happy colors well, well you Maybe need to work color. through the discovery you need to understand what the business is who the audiences yeah. are you need to discuss things you need to say okay well if it's going to go this way uh, you know, it could be red, blue, or green, but it also could be, you know, this kind of imagery, these kind of, these kind of, um, you know, brand assets that we bring to life. So, so a lot of it is is just working through the, those, mm -hmm. you know, going wide to then, oops, to then come, you know, then go narrow. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's why I think s some of those really kind of, uh, I guess, explorative or discovery conversations are a little bit trickier o online. Um, but we're, we're adapting and we're getting used to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, what's the fu overall future for your company? Do you see it as something that you may wonder? I was speaking to an entrepreneur yesterday and he said, um, well, he's not an entrepreneur, he's just a geek, a tech geek kind yeah, of guy. Nice. But, but he was saying how the ideas of a business that you sell it off or franchise it and then you can move on to something else. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess I guess um, we're not. You know, we haven't set up a product or a thing, or a, and uh, we're not sort of bringing an idea to market that we can then sell on. I guess what we're trying to do is create a little a little community of, of people that are doing great work. And so I, I sort of see I sort of see myself and business partner being you know growing the business if we can um you know and 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 really creating a little community of of great people doing good things so i see us being very involved i don't see us selling it off i don't think it has a value anyway to anyone but us um at the moment but um yeah i'd 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 like to i'd like to certainly stick around and see where it goes and and hopefully it gives us the license to um affords us an income but also gives us the opportunity to get some young talent get some graduates in and you know create a little bit of a, a creative community of, of, of good things a younger you 20 years ago yeah you first come to England yeah what would you advise the younger you knowing what you know now I, I think um, I think sometimes you get presented with opportunities and you don't really know that they are opportunities um, or, and, and so you don't hustle in the right way. And so it's, you know, the power of hindsight, I've had, I had a couple of really interesting opportunities where I could have worked, you know, for free or, you know, had some work experience where I wasn't paid. But I, at the time I couldn't afford to, you know, I had to pay rent. I had to, you know, do all these. So I had to, <laughs> I had to work in restaurants night and day and until I could find the right design job. But, you know, had I have taken certain opportunities it would have opened up my network it would have um, opened me up to a re- you know different different level of people earlier on and I you know I would really recommend anyone to just really understand uh, the power of the power of who who you know in a really positive way um, and the power of being able to tap into different networks of people and and really capitalizing on that because you never know where they those those random meetings or the random person who knows someone who knows someone where those opportunities go and um, my, I tell my younger self to be to, to have my eyes really really open for those opportunities um, I understand and last but not least what's the impact you want to have on this world uh, that's a good one uh, yeah well I suppose I, I probably need to be slightly less selfish <laughs> to create an impact um, or selfless uh, uh, the impact I want to have on this world, I don't know. I think um, it's a really d- difficult question. But if I can, uh, if I can leave the world knowing that um, I've shared the love, I've imparted some knowledge, I've been, um, you know, a, a, a good citizen, and I've helped people along the way, then then that's great. Um, I don't have any kind of um, huge desire to, to, you know, single-handedly change the world, but perhaps that's changing, um, and definitely want to be, um, more responsible with the way I consume things, and more responsible with, with the environmental impact that I have as a person, um, but that's, whether that has an impact, it has a very small impact, but it probably doesn't have a global impact, as it were. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Well, it, it, more importantly, it has to make sense to you. <laughs> I think because it does. you're going to be the one who's. You've caught me. Be. You've <laughs> caught me in the back of a cab on a, you know, my lunch break between between uh, yeah. meetings. So um, yeah. I, I, you're you, going to be the you're one. You're asking me to search my soul uh, <laughs> <laughs> on a but Thursday you, afternoon, you, and I'm, you, I'm I'm a bit like, oh crap. You know what <laughs> I, I said to an interviewee or a writer yesterday is that if you see he had problems answering that question. Yeah. And I said to him, you could look at it like this. We all should know where we're coming from. Yeah. Because it's who we are. But where we're going, the ultimate goal, if you don't know where you're going as the ultimate goal, then everything in between is irrelevant because you have no purpose. You're just, you can go left or right, up or down, inside, outside. Mm. So if you know your ultimate goal is, let's say, to help all the orphans of the world, Mm. Everything you do is going to be based towards that. Yeah. So even if you have to deviate slightly, yep. there's an that, end in that's mind. your purpose. Yeah. Now, obviously, you will never fulfill your purpose, but it's a goal that is sustainable that you could always be yep. traveling you're on. You're checking against them. And you're, you could tick off, like, I've helped a hundred orphans, or I had a thousand orphans last month. We need to increase that. Well, what are we doing? That kind of thing. Yeah. And then he, he understood. 
But I know it's a deep question. It's always a question that's like the curveball. Yeah, no, I like it. I like <laughs> it. The, the, well, the, the irony is that's what we do as a business, you know, is we help businesses mm-hmm. find their purpose. And mm-hmm. so uh, it's funny because we've been bring, banging that drum professionally. But as soon as you ask me personally, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like, oh, well, that's a, a tough bit, one. Bit lot, um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I think actually, um, you know, I'm not a huge uh, personality in my industry and I'm not a creative guru, but I think mm. if I can help, if, I, if we can, um, you know, help young people on the path to success and to um, create and, and help people have creative careers and, and create a community of people that then can, you know, that, that the ripple effect that that will have. And I think now in times of COVID, I mean, we're really keen to be able to get young people work in the industry. And um, so that that would be um, a short term goal um, mm. I have personally. Um, you know, so I think I think probably long term, if I can say I've helped people in 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 in, in as little ways or big ways as possible along mm. the way, then I'll be happy. Yeah, I understand that. I my background is a site manager. Mm. So when we came to when I we're speaking to clients and I've had to speak to architects, a lot of things is you've got to get inside their brain. Yeah. You've got to, um, and then some people want a job done, but they don't really know what they want. Yeah. So it's kind of two clients. You've got the ones who know what they want and then they're just being channeled, and you're kind of just helping them and saying yeah because of this. And the other ones you have to kind of drag it out of them yeah 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 and, and help you know it's a whole experience and that's probably where you got your code yeah exactly exactly yeah. Like that, yeah yeah mm-hmm. exactly and it's knowing how to get the best out of people and getting the right information and also you know um uh you know uh, i guess sh- sharing the knowledge and sharing you know sharing that out mm-hmm. okay well so just to be finishing now where can just where can people find you? Are you on Instagram? Or you you've got your website? Yeah, I think the best place to find me is uh, our website, which is we hyphen do hyphen co dot com, and uh, check us out. We're a small agency. Uh, we're working with some really interesting small businesses and some pretty big ones as well, and we're doing some cool things. So have a look um, and get in touch. Uh, but yeah, there's links to Instagram and, and all other things on there as well. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And that's we as in W E or yeah. W E E? We as in we. Yeah. W E, yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. That was- we hoped you liked that episode. Keeping in mind, we never know who we're going to interview. We post twice a day, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. GMT. Have you ever considered the future economies to invest in? Why not listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories? Considering Africa has the fastest growing economies and population on Earth and has done for many years, it holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. We publish twice a week, Tuesday with a guest investor and Friday's talking about investment, politics and history, providing a clear understanding for any potential investor.